Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Duffy Robbins, who just talked about wise living in a foolish world. Right. Welcome, Duffy. Right. Good to so be here. So good to have you back today. Always a pleasure. And so you talked to us about three follies right. that we see. Uh, yeah. We talked about the super I know it, not I knowism, super right. bozoism, and superheroism. Good for you. How about that? Excellent. <laughs> good. Excellent. Yes. And I think that we can probably recognize a little bit of ourselves. In all, in all of them. Either that or it's super naivism. I mean, it's, <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of it. Yes. In all of um, so one of the questions that we had came in around the superheroism. Okay. So you talk specifically about those under 25. Yeah. Um, and But this question came around, how does superheroism affect those that are in their older years? How do we see right, that right. apply to everyone? Um, well, you know, sort of jokingly a little bit, but I mean, all of us who are, all of us who are male, I mean, we sort of live as this superhero. I mean, studies have shown that men, when they're asked to kind of compare their self, themselves to other men in various categories of competence, uh, like one study I saw was a relational competence, uh, managerial ability, and then the one area where you would think self-deceit would be the most difficult, namely uh, your physical fitness in almost every category. Well, in every category, men rank themselves above average. And in most categories, we rank ourselves in the top 25%. So we are, as a species, uh, as a gender, we are uh, naturally just omnicompetent. Uh, and, and, and so I think um, there is sort of that, there is sort of that uh, inborn, pride, at least in Western culture for men to kind of think I'm the superhero. But, but I mean, think about it. You know, people who are, people who, these, these huge, like the smartest guys in the room, in run. Uh, you think about uh, people who were just this, you know, last week, people who were arrested on Wall Street, uh, you know, the governor of Virginia and his wife a couple of years ago. I mean, it, you know, what happens is we think somehow we are smart enough to be able to, to you know, sow this not and not have us. to reap. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not going to happen to us. And, um, and, and in some ways, I think the danger is when you, you know, if you haven't learned that lesson by the time you get beyond 25, then you really do start to sort of fall into this deceit mm -hmm. that I am a better driver than most people are when they're buzzed. Like I, I'm gonna warn my kids, kids, you know, I'm gonna warn, you know, my, but, 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 but I am actually better at this. And that's when, and so in a way, that deception becomes even more ingrown and even more hardened the older we get, uh, because we think I can pull this off. It's, it's sort of that, uh, it's sort of that idea that, uh, you know, I've been able to work my way this far doing it this way, I'll keep doing it this way. and. And so in a way, I think it's the, the deception begins to harden and make, and make us even more of a trap the older we get. That's but, good. but yeah, so it could be financial, it could be drinking, could be, you know, I mean, think about all those guys that signed up for the Ashley Madison website, that, 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 that huge thing last summer. I mean, what were they thinking, you know? Uh, what, what they were thinking is, I'll I can do this, caught. I won't get caught. Mm -hmm. And you will get caught, you know. And I mean, let, leave aside the fact that caught or not caught, that was a stupid thing to do. But, but it, it's part of it's anchored in this deceit mm -hmm. that I can do this. I can watch the pornography, and it's not going to affect my my relationships. I can, you know, I can do these. And, and that is the face of a fool. That's the folly of a fool. That's good. Uh, so one other question came in. Um, how do we recognize the difference between God's wisdom and the world's wisdom when neither goes against God's law or negatively impacts his people? Like if you're making a job decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. That's a, that's a huge question. In fact, that's a question that I'm going to explore a lot more you set us up so good. next week. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so that's precisely what we're going to talk about because this week we talked about three faces of folly. Next, we're going to talk about three marks of wisdom. Um, and, and I'm literally going to take, uh, I don't know, a good portion, of, a fourth of that 
talk I, I want to talk about. Okay, all right, all right. Let's take all that wisdom stuff and all the following. How do I actually put this into practice? And so we're going to address that. However, having said that, I'll say this. I think um, this question um, understands what a lot of us struggle with is that sometimes I go, well, um, I don't trust myself. I, I know that I might be, I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, deceived, and I know the heart is deceitful. And so how do I know if it's God wisdom? How do I know if it's what I want to do? And we sort of, you know, we, we make a couple of mistakes. One is to not stop to ask those questions. We just kind of plow right in there. And in those cases, of course, um, the heart deceives us into thinking we want what uh, what maybe uh, God, our creator and author, knows is not good for us. But the other mistake is is also bad, and that is we keep prosecuting ourselves. Go, am I really sure? Am I absolutely sure? Should I have Cheerios or Raisin Bran? I don't know. Let me pray about this. You know, and uh, and so we get paralyzed. You know that that old thing, paralysis of of analysis type thing. Here's how I would a short answer would be this that. That in Scripture, God gives us uh, both precepts and principles. Precepts are the thou shalt nots that are quite clear. Principles are, um, in this situation, uh, this is what you want to remember. But in this situation, you might make a different choice because of this principle. I liken it to the difference between a stop sign and a yield sign. You know, a stop sign, it's stop. I mean, there's, you, you stop. Now, Granted, we might think we can run that stop sign. We might get away with it every now and then and go, ha ha, I'm better than the average person at spotting the policeman. You might get away, but ultimately, you know, whether you get away with it or not, you're breaking the law when you don't stop. But there are other signs that say yield, and, and, and that might require you to stop, or it might require you to speed up, or it might require you to stay a certain speed. And that's where um, you have to bathe, we have to bathe our mind, saturate our mind in God's word, but we, are, we apply the principles. And then I think when we do that, God's going, you know what? It's, it's not like a pinpoint that is my will in this matter. It's not like, do I go to Toledo or do I go to Des Moines or do I, you know, go to, you know, Cheyenne? Because I think God says, you know what? You can pursue me. What, you, what I want you to do is pursue me. And you can pursue me in, in any of those three places. Now, it was a question, of, do I go there and work you know, for the mafia? Or do I go here and work uh, you know, for a minute? That, that's where you go back to your precepts again. Right. right? So I, I think that's, um, that distinction is an important one. But it also just comes back to saying I got to make sure that I use the wisdom from God uh, to, you know, to, to orient myself when I make those choices. And that's why the writer of Proverbs you know, it's a learning process. It's not just, it's not just something, but it's also a gift from God that he gives to us. So, um, yeah, I think it's approaching it that way. But we are going to talk about that Good. in more concrete details next week. We're excited to have you back. I'm sorry to hear more there. about Thanks it. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. And join us back here for next week for Postscript. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.